So now that you've talked about the idea of splitting into components and you know trigonometry is coming, here is a step-by-step -step procedure on how to do that. You can see that you start to get some triangles going on. You're always trying to make nice right triangles to solve for components. And here's the trigonometry that I promised. So now, moving on a little bit more. On page 101, you get to, all right, actually doing the math of how to add vectors with components. So how do you actually do it? We saw how to do it with pictures. Now you've got to be able to do it if I give you a vector is, say, 5 meters in x and 3 meters in y, and another vector is 3 meters in x and 5 meters in y. How do you add them? How do you actually go about adding them? That's what's being discussed in this particular section. So this shows you, again, it's a step-by-step -step procedure, like, say, long division or subtracting big numbers. You know, there's a step-by-step -step procedure. Same is true here. There's a step-by-step -step procedure that we just kind of expect you to learn and know. We'll get practice with it in class. I'd like to remind you something from the goals and objectives worksheet for this chapter. Our goal here is for you to learn the mechanics of how to do vector addition. So if I give you two vector vectors drawn as pictures, I want you to be able to draw the sum or the difference. If I give you two vectors, say, a x is 3 meters and a y is 5 meters and b x is 2 meters and b y is minus 1 meter. I should be able to give you this, ask you a plus b, and you should be able to give me an answer. That's what we're expecting you to do. We're not really expecting you to take big convoluted word problems and set these up. We'll work on that in class. We just want you to know the mechanics, how to turn the crank. We'll deal with the problem solving aspect of using these things in class. So you have some nice examples to study and practice with before you try practicing it on your own in the homework. And this is where I want you to stop. So I want you to read before this, but do not read section 3.4 or any subsequent sections in this particular chapter. We're going to approach projectile motion in a slightly different way, using some different tools, some more modern and sophisticated tools that you'll be able to use elsewhere in your careers. The way this book covers it is really nice for people who want to become physicists or engineers or stuff like that. But for most of you, these particular equations, not very helpful. So we're going to approach things in a slightly more modern way and use simulation to understand these phenomena as opposed to some basic equations. So that ends our video guide for chapter three. Enjoy your reading.